You want to write a song, you're itching to put lyrics down on paper for a character or a story that you want to bring to life. But you don't have any music. Huh. So what can you do? Of course you could go find a composer, or ask the composer you already have, but maybe you've run into the trouble of not being able to find a composer yet. Your composer isn't currently available. Your composer doesn't feel inspired to start this song. Or perhaps the composer even just wants the words first for this one. Which puts you back exactly where you started, with a brilliant song in your head that needs lyrics, but with no music to work with. Here are some ways that you, my lyricist friend, can overcome this music blockade. Plan it out. This might sound obvious to a lot of you, but you'd be surprised how many musical theater writers I've come across who hear the word plan and they just run for the hills. Ma! Run! It's a plan! Honestly, there's not a lot of planning that needs to go into this. If you've had the opportunity to speak with your composer about the song, decide what the song is, what it's doing, what characters are singing, and what the main idea and or hook of the song is going to be. If you have not yet talked to them about those things, well, then I would say to start there. What is your song? Why is it here? Why are we singing at this particular moment and in what song style? Once you know that, then you'll need to know what your song is actually doing. And this can mean for the audience, for the characters on stage, for the movement of the plot, or all three. Who is singing this song? And who else is on stage who may not be singing this song? And as always, why? And finally, what is the main idea of this song and what hook are you using to represent that main idea? You may not know this one yet, but it's still good to consider up front because knowing your hook makes writing the rest of the song way smoother and easier. Beyond these major questions, what else can go into a lyricist's planning? So many things, but here are the essentials that I would start out with. What song structure seems most appropriate to the song that you're about to write? Does it feel like a 32 bar chorus song, a more contemporary extended AABA shape, or perhaps it feels more like a pop song in that verse chorus kind of feel? Knowing your structure ahead of time can help you shape your character's thoughts and actions along the way. What actions are the characters on on stage taking? Is there a goal or objective of some kind that needs to be accomplished? How will they set out to do this, and how will the lyrics interplay with these actions? You may also want to consider early on what the rate of speech is going to be, aka the speed of the lyrics. Is this a patter song? Is this song going to be more of the rate of speech of this particular character? Or are the words going to be more long and drawn out and more of a ballad-like style? Will the words bounce in a playful manner? Will we be using wordplay, or will we be using alliteration and consonants and assonance in very intentional ways? Which also leads to asking about rhyme. Does this song want to rhyme? And are those rhymes perfect? Imperfect? Are we using internal rhymes as well as rhymes at the ends of lines? And what do these rhymes say about the characters and the actions they're taking? Of course you don't need to know the answers to all of these concretely before you dive in, but having a sense of what you're going to be doing and where you're headed really helps when you're starting off to write your lyrics. Dummy melody. Now, when I say dummy melody, I mean a melody that you are creating as a lyricist, fully aware that when your composer gets a hand on the lyrics, they are going to write their own music and your melody will not be used. It's kind of a stand-in melody for while you write, and a lot of lyricists I know do this automatically in their heads. I mean, I know I do. It can be very helpful to simply just start by writing a melody that has a similar feeling to the song that you know you want to be writing at the end of the day, and just begin writing a lyric to that melody. It can be very uncomfortable to write a lyric to nothingness. Having a sense of notes in rhythm can keep you focused, grounded, and consistent as you write. And if you're someone who can't come up with a melody easily, not to worry. You can instead just focus on the number of lines in a section, the number of syllables in the line, and have a rhythm attached to each of them. Notes are not necessary for this quote-unquote dummy melody to work for you. And you can always pull what I call the choreographer trick and just come up with the rhythms and sounds like gidung gung and ba -doo -ba. Or my old standby, which is using different variations and emphases on the word Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo-Bop-Doo-Beep-Beep-Bow. 
That's legit, I do that. Just ask my collaborators. This can be fun and often easier to remember or to dive into than just numbers or hand claps. Find inspiration. Perhaps you've found yourself not knowing where to start, even for melody or rhythmic structure or word choices or rate of speech. <sighs> I get it, I've been there, I know. Honestly, one of my favorite things to do is to look for inspiration elsewhere. You can, of course, look at other songs in the musical theater canon that do similar action or have a similar emotional tone or sound that you want to utilize and study them and figure out how they work. The trap here is, of course, that you don't want to accidentally end up writing one of those songs by mistake instead of your own song. That reminds me of ye old Tumblr post from many moons ago showing how how On My Own from Les Mis and those you've known from Spring Awakening have lyrics that can be almost perfectly mapped on top of each other. Those you've known and lost still walk behind you. On my own, pretending he's beside me. Probably not what you're looking to do. <laughs> but there are plenty of non-musical theater places that you can go for inspiration as well. There's of course pop music, but you could also listen to folk, jazz, rock, indie, country, any type of music that tickles your brain and gets you feeling inspired. Inspired. Beyond music, poetry and plays are wonderful places to look as well. Glam poetry, epic poems, sonnets, Shakespearean verse, these are all lovely places to go that are non-musical places to get inspired. Know what you're saying. I know this isn't the most fun or interesting exercise for a lot of writers, myself included, but having a sense of what you're going to say and how it's going to flow before you actually start writing the song is a game changer. Some people actually like to write out the dialogue or the monologue that this character would say as though it were an actual scene and then eat that scene up into a lyric. Other people like to write a bulleted list of all the things that a character might say or do in a way that flows logically and naturally and take that and use that as the basis. Other people like to write a short paragraph or even a long run on sentence of what they're about to say and do and then sprinkle in some flavorful words and colors, things that might actually end up absorbed into the lyric itself. As long as you have what the characters might say and do with some sort of logical flow to it, you're doing the right work. Lyric mapping. Now this is a big old monster of a technique that can be done very, very simply or in an extremely complex way. In fact, I teach an entire lesson on lyric mapping in my musical theater writing workshop course, which I'll leave a link to in the description and the comments below. Since it is such a gigantic topic and technique, I'm not gonna dive into all the nitty gritty here, but this is a great way to start feeling inspired and have a place to begin from if you just can't find this anywhere else. The idea behind a lyric map is taking a song that you know, like, or admire and then mapping out the lyric itself to figure out how it's doing what it is doing. At its very basic, this could just be the number of syllables in each line with some emphasis and the rhyme scheme. At its most complex, this could also mean mapping out intention, assonance, consonance, action, musical phrasing versus lyrical phrasing, rests, emphasis, and accents, and many, many more things. The advantage of a lyric lyric map is to have a starting place for you to feel inspired that is not a blank page with a blinking cursor of doom. And that's even if the lyric you write ends up looking nothing like the lyric that you mapped out. Having somewhere to begin, even if it's something that you end up throwing away, can be a lifesaver. But none of this really matters if you don't first know the essentials of what it is that you're trying to write. And if that sounds like you, then you should watch this video next. Otherwise, thank you all for being here with me today and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.